All right, uh, thanks everyone for joining. So today for developer q and I'm gonna be talking about some of our enterprise capabilities. Um, so that includes some enterprise specific endpoints and our Skim API. So these are both uh, resources that in order to leverage, you need to have an enterprise plan on Miro. Um, so I'm gonna start with the Skim API, but before I get into the Miro Skim API, um, for anyone who's less familiar, I just wanna cover uh, what Skim is and, and why you might use it. So um, Skim is actually an open standard, short for System for Cross-Domain Identity Management, and it's typically used by enterprises uh, or partners to manage and provision users um, and other attributes. Um, yeah, so they'll use this across various organizations that they interact with. Um, you know, you might use this because it brings uniformity to a, a fairly common administrative process uh, when it comes to managing users and group life cycles for a company. Um, yeah, Skim API endpoint follows the standard Skim conventions, so you can manage users and groups in the same way for one organization as you would for another. So I guess, you know, kind of as an example, if you're like a large enterprise who leverages software like, say, like Teams or Zoom for video conferencing, um, and maybe Miro for visual collaboration, all of these organizations uh, most likely support a Skim API for managing users or groups. So if a new employee starts at your company, you need to provision them with a Miro account uh, and a Zoom account. You can do this in a really similar way for both companies by making requests to their respective Skim endpoints. So essentially, it's just a standardized way to manage users and groups in a familiar programmatic way across tools and orgs. Um, and Skim also supports SSO users, um, which is another main reason why it's popular to use for enterprise level provisioning of users. Um, but yeah, that's just a bit about Skim. I'll, I'll dive into a demo here of the Miro Skim API. And to kick us off, I'll just go over some of the prerequisites. So to use the Skim API at Miro, uh, you need to have a Miro account and you need to have a Miro account that's on an enterprise plan. Um, so if you're on an enterprise plan, you can go to um, your settings in Miro and you can select one of the teams that uh, is an enterprise team. So I'm just gonna go to a test team here. And under, under, under any enterprise team, uh, you're gonna see an enterprise integrations section. And here's where you're gonna see a bunch of settings regarding SSO and Skim provisioning. Um, so a prerequisite for using the Skim API is that SSO is enabled. Um, so you'll want to make sure that this is turned on for your account. And again, this requires an enterprise plan. Um, so these details are going to be provided by your IDP. So this is unique to you as an enterprise or an organization. Um, but the thing that uh, you're going to want to grab from this page to use the Skim API is this API token right here. So this token is specific to the Skim API. It's not going to work for our other API endpoints. Uh, those are going to need uh, a standard authorization token, um, which you can get following our REST API quick start. So I'm just going to copy this token from right here. And then once we have this, we can actually uh, make a request. So uh, if you go to our API documentation, you'll see the Skim API is detailed up here at the top. And we have a bunch of different guides and, and whatnot, but I'm just going to jump right to an endpoint so that we can kind of demo this. Um, so yeah, you can get a specific user using the Skim API. Uh, so I have this endpoint over here on the right-hand side in Postman, and I'm just gonna simply grab uh, the ID from uh, something I already have, but you could get this from any one of our other APIs, or you could call just get users, and that would list a bunch of users and their IDs. I'm not gonna do this right now because um, I don't wanna share all that information, but uh, just to, to know how to get that ID. So as an example, if I make this request, um, and just to show you that I can use the token I just grabbed, paste that in, and you'll see I get you know, a lot of details that we'd expect for a user, like display name, user type, uh, email, what groups they're in, their roles. So these are all standardized fields and schema for a user per skim convention. So uh, you'd have the same format returned if you called the Microsoft Skim API or the, the Slack Skim API, Zoom, etc. That is the big benefit of using Skim is 
um, you know what to expect in the API response in terms of the convention in the fields. So um, yeah, just a, a quick kind of example there. We can also uh, you know, make a patch request to update one of these fields. Let's say I want to change my display name, just switch this to something like this. Um, and I can send this request. And now if I make this get request again, we should see that the display name changes to William. Um, just to give you an example again of uh, the skim endpoint. Um, a few other things to call out. The skim endpoint is v1 slash skim slash users um, in contrast to some of the other Miro endpoints like our teams or orgs endpoints, which are uh, v2. So just calling that out. Um, this user's part of the request URI is specific to skim. Um, we can also call the resources endpoint if we want. So built into skim, there is a resource types endpoint that'll show you the supported resource types for your organization. So it's, um, at Miro, we support um, user and group via the skim API. So that's what you'll see returned here, user and group. And you can see some of the fields that are involved in this. Um, yeah, so that's a bit about the skim API. Um, so in contrast to this skim specific endpoint at Miro, uh, we do also have other enterprise endpoints and you can find those under our API documentation. If you go to the bottom here, you'll see they all have a, a notation to let you know that they are enterprise endpoints. So again, you'll need an enterprise plan to call these endpoints. Um, and for this, you'll also want to use a different token than the one we started with. For these endpoints, you'll use a standard OAuth access token um, in Miro. So I'm going to quickly show you how you would do that for an enterprise plan. So let's go back to our boards here. And um, let's go back to our enterprise team that I was uh, showing you earlier as a bit of a test. And if we go to an enterprise team, or we're under an enterprise uh, org, we should see the option um, to click on teams, and we could create a new team under our enterprise plan here. So I'm just going to call this. Ooh, I'm just going to call this, uh, you know, my test and team, and then I'm going to check off that it's a developer team. So this is how we would make a developer team specifically for like an enterprise plan um, so that we can test some enterprise endpoints uh, you know, without using an official team. So if I create this, you'll see it adds me as a member. So I'm the only member under uh, this team at this point. And um, I'm actually going to go back to my boards, go back to my, my developer apps. And I'm just going to use an app that I created for uh, testing enterprise endpoints. All this should look familiar to you if you've used the Miro APIs before. Um, you know, you're going to need a redirect URI. You're going to need to select the scopes that your app has access to. And so I'm selecting a bunch here. Um, team, read and write, audit logs, organizations. These are all enterprise scopes. So you won't be able to use these unless you have an enterprise plan. But then the rest uh, is the same here. So I'm just going to install and get an access token. And then here we'll see that test team that I uh, created. I believe it was this one, my test end team. So I can uh, use this to generate an access token. I can copy this access token and um, I can call one of these uh, enterprise endpoints over here. So let's say that I want to um, yeah, list teams. I could paste in my access token here organization ID. So this is something you can get by um, going to your enterprise team in the, uh, the UI here and grab this uh, from the URL. Paste that in here. And let's give this a try and just uh, do it right from the documentation here. And you'll see we can see a bunch of um, different teams under the my enterprise organization. And again, this is all information that uh, you wouldn't be able to pull unless you had an enterprise plan. So there's a lot of things you can do with an enterprise plan that are more administrative, uh, like managing teams, team members, uh, individuals' roles, um, team settings. So yeah, these are all enterprise specific. And then another one that is quite useful and specific to enterprise plans 
is the audit logs. So this uh, will give you a, a bit of a high level view of actions taken under a user's account. And this is specific to, again, enterprise. Um, so if we want to test this, I can show you real quick. Let me just make sure I can grab the token that I was using. I believe I was using this endpoint. Give this token here. Go back to the get logs. Paste in my access token. And yes, it takes a timestamp for created after and created before. And this is to show you uh, the range of logs. So I'll quickly put in you know, 2022. What is it? It is November, so 11. I'll say from November 1st. And then the T stays. Hour, we'll say 00. zero. Minute, 00. zero. Quite to the timestamp here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna copy this. And we'll say, how about uh, November 8th or so? Or we'll do to today, November 9th. So we can give this a try. And you'll see here, um, we've got a ton of information in this API response. And um, this is basically a, a record of any action that's happened under this account. So you'll get, um, you know, all sorts of details on events. And so you'll see a type event, you'll see uh, the context, the team, organization, if someone, uh, what kind of authorization type they have, you can see they signed in um, at this time, you know, so you see all sorts of details. Um, so it's a very handy endpoint. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically it for, for demoing some of these enterprise specific uh, APIs. Um, just to kind of, to recap here again, both the skim uh, APIs and these, these team and team settings organizations endpoints, uh, these enterprise endpoints, all require a higher level plan, um, but it, it's useful to leverage these APIs to do all sorts of administrative tasks in Miro um, that would otherwise, you know, require manual intervention. Um, but yeah, hopefully this shines a bit more light on what you can accomplish with some of our enterprise capabilities. And uh, I also hope that this serves as a helpful demo of creating a developer team under an enterprise plan, um, as well as finding the skim specific token um, in your Miro settings.